So this is the winter not so thunderland, eight to twelve inches. Thank you, New Hampshire weather. Hey BookTube, it's Kim at middle of the book march, and this is my bookish week, including a chatty chat for Saturday, February twenty-sixth. Almost the end of the month. It's crazy how fast it goes. And yes, I'm sitting here in New Hampshire looking at the snow still falling. This is Friday at four o'clock that I'm filming. And I think I've got about five inches, six inches so far. It's supposed to be eight to 12. Hopefully this is the last snowstorm of the winter and we can go into March and just deal with cold and rain and whatever, but yeah. So um, I finished three books last week, but I can only talk about one because two of them are for the BookTube prize. And I got lucky. I am judging translated fiction. And I have Group A. Group A, all six books are super short. One of There's only one that's over 300 pages. The other five are pretty much novella length. So I've already finished four of the books, including the one that's about 340-something pages. So I only have two more left to read in March for the Octo Finals. So I, I lucked out with the length of all of these books. But two of those I can't, not going to talk about, not going to tell you the titles. The one book I can talk to you about is uh, Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I love this edition. This is the Harper Perennial Classic Edition. And uh, there's so many out there because this book has remained in print since its original publication. But I love this one. I listened to this on audio. Now, I read the hard copy a few years back and I... I saw the excellence in the book, but I it didn't I struggled with it because of the dialect. And I I could tell that her writing and her characterization was genius. Um but reading it at first was was a struggle. I listened to it on audio, which was narrated by Ruby D, a very well known and amazing um theater Broadway actress. She did do television and, and all kinds of acting. It was phenomenal. It was tear-inducing and powerful and frightening. It was just fantastic. So I highly recommend listening to this on audio, narrated by Ruby D. I wouldn't listen to any other recording. But this is the story of Janie, who was born in, in uh, Florida in the 30s. I believe it starts in the 30s. And she was raised by her grandmother, who was a former slave. Um, Janie's mother was raped as a teenager and conceived her. And after her birth, her mother left, left the family. And so Janie was raised by her grandmother. Her grandmother's goal was to marry Janie off in order to give her protection. And she knew she was old already, and she knew that she wasn't going to live forever, and, and Janie would have been all alone. So her grandmother's goal was to find a husband for her to make sure she was protected and hopefully to give her a life where she could take the time to sit on her front porch if she wanted or she could choose what she did during every day. However, the first husband that Janie married was a much older man who owned a large amount of land. He had his own farm. He basically wanted a wife to help him work the farm, cook the meals, you know, end up in his bedroom at night and then do the same thing all over again every day. So there was, it wasn't a love match. And Janie as a teenager wanted love. She wanted passion. And uh, shortly after she married this older man, Logan, her grandmother died. And so she was kind of stuck and it, she just got so sick and tired of the burden of this marriage and the burden of working with him on this farm and having nothing, having no emotional connection and so she was home one day and um, this man kind of walks up the road, Joe, who's called Jody, and uh, he sees her and he's kind of taken with her and basically seduces her to leave her husband, leave her farm, leave her life and come with him because he's on to a big adventure. Her second husband, Jody, basically, when after they get married, he wants her as a trophy because he's now traveling to a town called Eatonville in Florida. 
And it is a town made up all primary, not primarily, of only black people. And it's, it's kind of a utopia for, for black people coming out of the Jim Crow South and looking for a place where they could have a life. And so he, co he goes to this town bringing Janie and ends up becoming the mayor and also opening this general store, which is the hub of the town. So he's the big man on campus and he wants Janie as a trophy wife. And again, she ends up being in a marriage where there's no love, there's no passion, and she's married to him for 20 years before he dies and makes her a widow. And she's now 40, in her 40s, and she meets Tea Cake, who becomes her third husband. And finally, she finds love. She finds the passion that she's always been looking for, even as a woman in her 40s. And uh, I'm not going to say any more about any more of the story with Janie and Tea Cake because that's the, the most pow powerful parts of the story. But ultimately what this book is about is the growth of this young woman and the relationships and the reason why Janie as this type of woman, a black woman in the South in the 30s, needs and is kind of obligated to marry or to be married off in order to survive. But she... She wants more than that. She wants a, a better life, a stronger connection. She wants that love. She, she doesn't just want to be protected. As valuable as she knows that is, she just wants so much more. She's such a, a more vivid and driven and determined young woman than having that type of a life. Um, it's just a phenomenal book. It's phenomenally written in Hurston's description of these characters in the life that Janie leads. Uh, the prose, the everything about the context is fascinating. And it's just a gorgeous book. Um, I will read the hard copy again because I want to get more of the immersion of the language and the description. Um, the, the story is just spectacular. It's such a, a well machined story and a well-crafted narrative and uh one of one of the best modern class classics i've ever read and what makes me happy about this book even though this has ended up on banned book lists for many 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 years decades um it is still being assigned in schools across the country um and it should be because the amount of analysis that can go into this novel and the amount of um conversation that this starts is just fantastic and it's one of the best modern classics that I've ever read. That's the only book that I've read that I could talk to you about. So I'm gonna have a little bookish chat with you, a chatty chat about a few different things. I am currently reading Attica Locke's The Cutting Season and I'm about halfway through. I'll probably finish it tonight or tomorrow night at the latest. I'm about halfway through. This is quite very quickly the story of um, Karen, who is the manager of a, of a former plantation in Louisiana, which has now become kind of a working tourist attraction. And there's a, a dead body is discovered in a shallow grave on the property. So it is a kind of a police mystery procedural story. Um, and it would have been perfect for March Mystery Madness, but I picked it up in February. And I am about to embark on uh, the Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. And this is for my in real life book group with the Critical Chicks. Um, it's 1969 in New York City's Lower East Side and word has spread of the arrival of a mystical woman, a traveling psychic who claims to be able to tell anyone the day they will die. The Gold Children, four adolescents on the cusp of self-awareness, sneak out to hear their fortunes. And um, so yeah, that's, and I love, I love the, the really pretty shiny things on the cover. But that's what we're going to be reading next in the Critical Chicks book group for March, for early March. And I have one buddy read in the month of March. Um, I did talk about my new process for buddy reading, but this one I was, I'm so looking forward to. I'm only going to do one buddy read a month if I do any. This one is with AJ Dunn um, from AJ Dunn Reads and Writes, and I will link their channel down below. We are reading Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Nabokov? Nabokov. Who knows? People know. I'm not sure. But I searched high and low for a book without the 
young schoolgirl nymphette on the cover because I just don't believe for what I do know about the story, I can't stand that characterization of Dolores. So I look, I got this one, which is perfect for me because there's no picture on the cover and it's the annotated version of Lolita. And um, this is a book that I've I've read so many other books that refer to this. And this is, again, another modern classic that I've been avoiding for years, but have finally really excited to read this with AJ. And I think that was all for what I read, what I'm currently reading, what I go am going to pick up soon. What I would like to show you now is a Library of America book haul. So I talked about book subscriptions before. And for a long time, I was subscribed to Book of the Month Club. I was also subscribed to Library of America. Those were the only two that I stayed subscribed to for any length of time. Now, I canceled Book of the Month Club, and this is why. Um, I did really enjoy it, and it's a great deal. Uh, I was not finding books that I really wanted to buy. So it was kind of 50-50 every single month. The store, the, the way it works is you pay $14.99 a month, and you have a book out of five that you pick every month. And you can also do two add-ons per month for $9.99 each. There's a lot of deals. You get a free book on your birthday. There's a lot of times you'll get free books. And it's a great deal if you if you really like it. But I've noticed in the past few months that I'm not really thrilled with the selections that are coming up. And I've bought all of the other add-ons that I've wanted to buy. So there's not a lot of... not very many new books that I've wanted to acquire. So I canceled that subscription. I had put my Library of America subscription on hold, but I renewed it and it's now live again. So I'm now getting books from Library of America. And very quickly, the last two that I've been sent, because what you basically do is you sign up for Library of America and you give, there's a whole gigantic list of books that you would like to get. And you, they send them to you every six weeks or so. They send you a slipcased book off of that list. But you don't know which one you're going to get that month. So in the last few months, I have received Black Reconstruction by W.E.B. Du Bois. In this, it's, this one is red and it's got the Library of America slipcover on it. And um, these are collector's books. These are just, just so well made gorgeously bound, and all American classics. This one is Octavia E. Butler, and this is a bind-up of Kindred, Fledgling, and Collected Stories, and this one is in the blue cloth fabric. Um, I have and read, I have and have read Kindred, and I have read one of her collection of short stories. Um, Octavia Butler is an excellent uh, science fiction author, um, and I will absolutely read Kindred again. I also have another hardcover copy of that one. And I also ordered um, four additional books. I think these were, these are all on sale. Three of them are mysteries, and I may pick one of one or more of these up for March Mystery Madness. I don't know. Now, this one is a book by Dolores Hitchens, Sleep with Strangers. And this is a detective novel, the Jim Sater detective novel number one. Now, Dolores Hitchens, um, really interesting. Her name was super long. She had a really long name and it was Julia Clara Catherine Maria Dolores Robbins Norton Burke Olson Hitchens. And she she was born in December of, of uh, let's see, 1907. Yep. And died August 1st in 1973 at the age of 65 years old. She was extremely prolific American mystery novelist and she wrote police procedurals and also did books with railroad police and railroad mysteries. And her second husband was a railroad detective. So I, I got this book. Um, let's see. Private Eye, Jim Sater. It's a, this is a hard boiled classic. Um, and sh I ordered this one and the other two and the other three. Because what I've really enjoyed about Library of America is discovering more classic women authors and authors of color. And so I found this one and Fool's Gold by Dolores Hitchens. And this one, um, the inspiration for the classic film Band of Outsiders. 
And Hitchens has dozens and dozens of novels. She was a prolific mystery writer. Let's see, this one, uh, what starts as, a, this is um, Sleep With Strangers. What starts as a missing person's case grows more puzzling with the discovery of another strangely coincidental disappearance. Sater finds himself deep in a multi-layered intrigue revolving around oil and real estate in the sleazy underpinnings of Long Beach, California in the 50s. It's taut and suspenseful and uh, yeah, looking forward to that one. Fool's Gold, um, she wrote crime novels that were tough and compassionate and uh, Fool's Gold is a swift and unadorned tale of three young people, two boys just released after being incarcerated for a juvenile offense, and an orphan girl living in a house full of secrets, whose lives are rapidly torn apart by what starts as a simple plan of robbery. Um, those both sound really good. This one is by he Helen Eustace, The Horizontal Man. And she was also an American mystery and crime writer, but she only wrote three novels. Three novels, two novels, two or three. Um, she was born 1916 and died in 2015 at 98 years old. And she studied art at Smith College. And Fool's Gold was an Edgar Award winner um, for, I believe, crime and mystery novels. Uh, let's see, a philandering professor is found murdered, setting off ripples of suspicion and panic in this Edgar Award winning classic from 1946. So, yeah, these all sound really, really good. This one, this is a, in, a, in a Library of America bind up of uh, com the three complete novels of Gene Stafford. And this one, this has this black cover, but it is also one of the cloth bound. Um, Library of America books, but I also have a few of these with this black, um, what is it called? Dust jacket. There we go. I can, I have a memory. So Jean Stafford, uh, born in 1915, died in 1979 at 63 years old. She was more well known for her short stories, but she was also a novelist, only wrote three novels, which are all included in this volume. She won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction for the collected stories of Jean Stafford in 1970. And her first novel was Boston Adventure, which was an immediate bestseller and a classic. Her first marriage was to Robert Lowell, the poet who was uh, very well known for emotional instability and, and mental Ill severe mental illness. And Jean Stafford was married to him and suffered a disfiguring car accident while he was at the wheel. And uh, she never, never physically recovered from it, was a facial um, disfigurement. I'm not sure if she had other physical injuries from it. Um, and she also had some mental illness, depression, was an alcoholic, and she died very young at 63 years old. So, but I'm really... She, oh, one of the other reasons why I recognized her name was um, she was interviewed by Joan Didion at the Barbizon Hotel way back when, while well, she was very young. And um, when I read that part of the Barbizon, the book I just finished with Britta and Heidi, I recognized Jean Stafford's name. I'm like, oh, I think I have that book from Library of America. So that's it. That's all I wanted to tell you. Um, what else? Yeah, it's been a well, it's been a super busy week and the I I didn't have a chance. I thought I would have finished the cutting season by now. But my daughter and her husband are moving into their their house that they bought new to them this weekend. So for the last 2 weeks I've been painting. I think I've said this before how much I'm how much pain I'm in from painting. I put furniture together. I've been helping her move. They have two bunnies, two house bunnies as pets, so I help move that stuff doing some cleaning, and it's been a process. So this is Friday. I've had Wednesday, Thursday, and today off. And Wednesday and Thursday, I was at their house. Um, my husband's been working on some electrical work, so we've been at their, their empty house almost every night for a week. Haven't done laundry or grocery shopping for about a week and a half. Except for last night, I did go grocery shopping because we're I'm not going anywhere today with six inches of snow outside. Um, and at this point, I'm rambling, so, but I'm so tired. I'm so tired. So I'm going to go and put in some laundry and figure out what to make for dinner. And I'm going to sit down and, and continue to read the cutting season. Oh, 
The Cutting Season by Attica Locke. Attica Locke is a screenwriter, and if you're not aware, she wrote Bluebird, Bluebird, and Heaven My Home, which are fantastic. I absolutely recommend you reading that, which is a series which will be continuing. She's a screenwriter, and I just watched Little Fires Everywhere on Hulu. It's a limited series. And she was a screenwriter for that show. She's worked with Shonda Rhimes, and she worked on the, um, I think she worked on the show Scandal. Um, but it's it's obvious, her books are obvious that she also has screenwriting talent because of how well written and propulsive they are. And so I'm really looking forward to sitting down and hopefully finishing Cutting Season tonight. Uh, I would love that because the book is very good and it's, immersive so yeah that's it for me i'm gonna stop talking L write me a comment down below let me know what you think of any of these books what you think of any of my new books that i got from library of america and i hope you have a great night and i'll see you in the next video bye everybody